Good morning, Hampton Roads. How's everybody doing today? And welcome to Virginia's only local real estate investing podcast, where we get to talk about local investors, local deals, and all things local. I'm your host, the founder of the Master Investor Academy and author of my best-selling book, Work Just Gets in the Way of Making Money, Scott Jelinek. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, things you'd like to discuss, um, properties you'd like to sell, go ahead and text me at 757-699-4227. That's 757-699-4227. So a couple of things I wanted to go over with you guys today. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give you the absolute secret to success as a real estate investor. And then I wanted to answer a question that got texted into me. So first off, I want to start off with the absolute single biggest secret to success as a real estate investor. But what made me think about it was I was just thinking about this event we had this past weekend. And um, first off, let me tell you, we are officially doing another one because I've already, from you guys who responded on YouTube and the comments saying that you wanted to come, as well as the text that I've got, people that wanted to get um, that wanted to come, we are definitely going to do it again. It's probably going to be about six weeks from now. We're looking at March 12th, 13th, and 14th. I'm probably going to do it over three days. It was a lot to, to get it all done in two days. So if I can secure the venue, um, we're going to probably do it March 12th, 13th, and 14th. I'm going to work on finding out within the next couple of days. But what started me thinking about it is this event we did this past weekend was a great success. We had a great time. A lot of people learned a lot of things. It was enjoyed by everybody. But it, but it, I was telling the story when I was there of how it all came about. And it's it's interesting because a friend of mine was laughing at me. At, um, at, you know, we were talking, we were having a beer and we were talking. And, and then he was asking me how it all came about. And when I told him, he's like, he's like, man, you're crazy. And I, I forgot his exact words. And I'm going to think of it in a second. So it started off, I, you know, I told him, I, me and my wife were just, we were sitting at home. We were having a drink. Someone called into the office that day. Ironically, that person did not end up coming. But someone called into the office and left a voicemail and just said, um, hey, you know, I'm just trying to find out when your next event is. I'd like to come to an event. And so my wife and I were sitting there and we were like, man, it's been almost a year since we had an event. And, you know, we have to, uh, you know, what are we going to do? And then so, you know, we can't do anything. The rules, the rules right now is 10 people and and basically all live events have been canceled since last March. So we were sitting there and then all of a sudden we were thinking, well, what if, what if we just had an event with 10 people? And um, we were like, oh, well, that would be at least legal. But the hotels already told us they wouldn't allow us because they wanted, they wanted temperature checks and they wanted people to be separated by X amount of feet. And they wanted us, even for a small event, wanted us to have a 5,000 square foot ballroom. So then we were talking about it and we were like, well, what if we found a place that would allow this? And what if we met this criteria? And what if we did that? And it was just something we were just um, spitballing, you know, talking about it. Maybe this would work. Maybe that would work. Because, you know, we all know real estate investing is going to blow up in 2021 and 2022. People are going to make fortunes that they will live off of for the rest of their lives. These are going to be some great years coming up. So anyway, so we talk about it all night that night. And we were like, yeah, I guess if we could figure out a way to pull it off, let's do it. So then the next day I go to lunch. And um and I'm with uh with a friend of mine and we're eating lunch at this place that I've it's a private club I've been a member of for probably 15, 18 years. And I'm eating lunch, and then right before I left, I started thinking about she's got that big um, it's not a ballroom there, but it's a big dining room. And so I asked her before we left, I said, Hey, are you open on the weekends? Because I've always been there. It's a weekday type place, it's in a big office building. And she says, No, we're closed on the weekends. And then I saw that led to the next question. So I got a question for you. What would you charge me to rent this place? And, you know, we started talking about it. So she says, okay, um, you know, I wouldn't mind doing an event like that. Let me work up some prices for you, but yes, we can do it. And I said, well, what about these dates? She says, yep, they're available. So I literally, I leave out of there and I get in the car and I text my wife and I'm like, it's happening. We're doing an event just like that. Just like that. We had a conversation the night before. Next thing you know, we booked a place. And now three weeks later, we had the event. It went great. It was flawless. Um, people had a great time. A lot of people learned a lot and people are going to be successes because they attended that. So that's not it. So what started me thinking, so now I was talking to a friend of mine. I'm still trying to remember what he said. I was telling him exactly that story. And, uh, 
And he said something to me, and I don't remember what it was. And he said, oh, that would be a great title for a book. And then he says, oh, I got to remember who I'm talking to. You'll probably have it out and published by tomorrow. And, um, and, and that's what led me to think about what we were talking about today, the secret to success as a real estate investor. Are you guys ready for it? It's really simple. It is massive, imperfect action. And you guys know this already. Massive, imperfect action. And the reason we say imperfect is because nothing's perfect. And if you wait to have perfect, you will not do anything. We've discussed this over and over again. There is no such thing as perfect action. So you have to take massive, imperfect action, which means if you've been on the fence, if you've been thinking about being an investor, or if you are an investor, but you're not working to your full potential, you're not doing the things you need to do, this is your wake up call. This is what you need to do to be successful. Massive, imperfect action. You need to get out there and make it happen. And don't wait for it to be perfect. Go out there and screw it all up. Screw it all up and you're still going to be further ahead than if you hadn't done it at all. I hope that I hope I'm resonating with you. This is why we say massive and perfect action, not dabbling, not doing one little thing. Do everything and don't worry about it being right. Don't worry about it being perfect. Just do it. So let's use some scenarios here. Let's say you didn't want to do your marketing yet because you don't think your logo looks good or your website's not just perfect yet or whatever. Don't worry about it. If you get any leads, now you're doing better than you would have done if you waited to market, correct? Let's say you're not comfortable enough going on appointments yet because you don't know your proper comps or you don't know your proper buy call process or how you're going to speak or what you're going to do. Guess what? Go screw it all up. It doesn't matter because the more you go and screw it up, the more comfortable you're going to get at doing it. You're going to you're going to get comfortable at being uncomfortable. So the more you get in there and screw it up, the better off you're going to be. So don't worry about it. Just go and do it and do it wrong. It's OK. Go ahead and do it all wrong. Just do it and you'll move forward and you're going to be stronger each and every time you're going to move forward. So that was what I was thinking today. And I was thinking about how that event came about. And then I had all these people texting me that they want to come to the next one. And it was just sticking in my head that I'm like, this all came from my wife and I sipping a glass of wine, talking about one of the possibilities. How could we pull off an event during these times when everything shut down? And just like that, the next day it was on the books and we were making it happen. And now we're already making another one happen. It's likely going to be if we can secure these dates, March 12th, 13th and 14th. But I will let you guys know as soon as I know for certain, I'm going to try and secure it tomorrow. So that's all I got for you guys on that topic on uh, on the number one secret to success as a real estate investor is simple. Write it down. Remember it. Massive, imperfect action. The old uh, saying was, if you do not look back at your initial materials, and by initial materials, I mean your business cards, your website, your logo. If you don't look back at it a year from now and laugh at how bad it looked, laugh at yourself for how bad it looked. I can't believe I went out with that then you took too long to create it. Okay. So what I'm saying is it should look bad. Just do it, get it out there. You can always improve it. You can always improve it, but just go out and do it. I hope that, I hope that's getting through to you. So that was it for that. And then I also wanted to read a question that was asked about slow flips. So it asked, um, what factors do you go by when purchasing a slow flip? Um, what do you look for when you tour the house? Okay. So first off, what factors do I look, look for? So the, the most important thing is it has to, the numbers have to work. Meaning if I'm buying a $30,000 house, which is what I try and do, I need to know I can get eight seventy five dollars a month on average. Sometimes I get a little less, sometimes I get a little more so that I can pay it off in five years. Some people in some areas are saying, well, I want to do a $40,000 or a $50,000 house. And that's okay. You can do any amount as long as the numbers will work. If that house is going to get eleven seventy five dollars a month, or if you're negotiated your private lenders at 8%, it can still work. So you don't have to stick with my formula. But whatever formula you create, you want to make sure that you're working it out so that you can still pay it off. And I prefer five years. I have a few of my people are working on doing seven year plans. That's completely up to you. And it also depends on your age. If you're uh, if you're 30 years old, if you're 40 years old, you might say, OK, well, I can do seven years. It's not a big deal. If you're 50, 60, 70, you might be like, listen, I'm doing five years. But that's um, that's completely up to you, whatever you negotiate with your lender. So what do I look for? Typically what I look for, I used to always tell people what I want is I try and find a house that's somewhat livable. Doesn't have to be beautiful, but somewhat livable. But there's exceptions to that. For instance, yesterday I was on an appointment with one of our partners. I think I told you about it. And the house was completely gutted. It was a good house, decent area. But when you opened up the door, 
it was completely gutted, like somebody started to renovate it and then actually someone did and then disappeared. And so that's not at all livable, but it doesn't mean we'll say no to it. We're just going to price it accordingly. So we wouldn't offer 30,000 for that. As a matter of fact, they had two houses and I believe our offer was 25,000 for the two of them combined. So if you can get the price right, then we can overlook some other things because now I might be able to sell it to a, a contractor and charge him significantly less per month because there's going to be two houses to make up for that payment. So let me read. I think she had a third part to that question. Oh, okay. It was asked, do I consider if it's a landlord friendly state or strict foreclosure laws? Um, we don't do foreclosures on land contracts or contracts for deed. We, we, we evict just the same as if it was a tenant. So I can't speak for every single state, but when, what we do here is we use contract for deed. And if somebody defaults, there is no foreclosure. We do the same process as if we were evicting a tenant. So, um, so that wouldn't be an issue. If, if you're looking to go outside of your area and you want to check for landlord friendly states, I wouldn't worry about the foreclosure laws. I would worry about the eviction laws. So every state's different, but, um, but that's my, in my area where we are seven cities of Hampton roads is my primary investment area. We evict just like it was a regular tenant. We do not do any foreclosures because the deed's still in our name. We'd be foreclosing on ourselves. Um, so I hope that helps. I hope that answers your question. If, uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to text me 757-699-4227. Um, go out there and do something today your future self is going to thank you for. And the way you're going to do that is by taking massive imperfect action. Go ahead, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. So I know that you're out there and uh, greatly appreciate it. I know you guys have been doing it and I do like it. So I know that you're out there watching and uh, you have a fantastic day and I will talk to you tomorrow.